We are here for the dollar bills. No, what's up? It is New Year's, so you can trying to get that money. You can hear you can hear explosions in the background. So this is here the plan for big time in the upcoming months. So how can you have a plan for a game that's not out yet? Well, if you're asking that question, then you definitely need my help with that. Because you can plan for everything. So we're going to have some, if you can, in terms of financially versus if you are going to play it more for just a free aspect and then move into the play to earn initially after um, working your way in through the free to play aspect of the game as well as people who are more curious about cryptocurrency and nfts as opposed to a i don't want to say a hardcore game but a triple a game and an aspect of you you know appear to be a game that you will learn have to learn really gaming skills for not too much crazy but it doesn't hurt to get some practice and learn new skills so let's go into all those aspects really really briefly i could keep you long with this so if you can this is the plan acquire space period initially before going into it and 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 an early access pass so if you got enough money and can do those two things then those are really nice things to start off with this is where space is at today you can see the um, exalters really start to take off well some of the other ones had dropped down but it's still early and the access passes the gold the silver and the jade now you can get them for cheaper apparently on OpenSea for about 800 and the market if you can buy from the binance market around 700 dollars for um the j pass there 850 645 you can i guess you know go through and look for these Silver and gold, a little bit more, 6,000 here. As you remember, it's like 10,000 starting there, 2,000 there, a little silver here, 1,600. So you can go out here and you can see what the prices are for the passes here on. Open C as well. So, mm -mm -mm. the that's uh, one thing you can do. So, periodically check out Discord just to see what's happening with the game. You know, launch is supposed to be in a little bit past in the early of the second quarter of 2022, which is around April or May, somewhere April, May, June. So in that April, they keep saying April. So, you know, I I hope they're do, make sure they're doing everything correct as opposed to rushing it. You know, this is not something you want to be like a cyberpunk 2077. So. I'd rather they just take whatever, however time, much time it takes to make sure it's done right when it comes out. So, but, but check in on Discord periodically. And if you're new to massively multiplayer online role-playing games, that's what MMORPG stands for. Do some research, play a game, find, go look to see if there's some on your phone you can buy that's free that you can play or... Um, and we'll talk about this in a second. You know, you may want to find one on a computer that you can play because let's just skip gills for a second. Go to hardware. We're not exactly sure the hardware requirements to play in this game. So you may need to you may <laughs> you may have to uh, the computer system you play on may not be sufficient. You may have to be thinking about having to get something for that. So you got to be mindful of all these things. As soon as we get the more information, we you know everybody will be disseminated. I'm sure and getting the plan to do next but that may be something to take into account so start thinking about that now that's where we're talking about planning early and smart guilds guilds is you know 
if you're going in here for, well, I'll go back to the MM, MMO RPG stuff in a second. Let's. I'm gonna assume if you know that stuff, you played these games already. That you know we go skip for it. So guilds in this game, guilds will have you know probably have bought space. We'll be able to. Uh, <clears throat> give out our glasses so maybe something important to think about and of course the way this game is and i'll talk away back you're gonna need now i'm sure there may be some type of um i'm not sure but hopefully there may be some type of matchmaking system where you might necessarily have to be a part of a guild to to find teammates to do certain quests and, and um events but you know it'd be helpful to be able to have your choice of different tanks or different um, range players that you know, or you may want to go in there with two healers and something. So, and take profits. You got to take profits in this game. Um, I'm going to go back and talk a little bit more about an MMORPG and then come back to my like time horizon of where I think I want to make sure that I've. You know, whatever money I put in, I've, I've taken back out and then any profits I've accumulated, I make sure I get any lion's share out before there's any problems. And then, you know, even though the money is, you know, well past in the green in terms of earn, I wouldn't want to just lose it because of, you know, not paying attention. So. Uh, so if you're new to the world of a massively multiplayer online role playing game, then you know it's, it's pretty simple. Or you may come across these concepts, these archetypes, just in other things you've done in life or media, and just come across. And, and it, it it's like something that's like simple to understand, but it takes a long time to master. So don't feel like you're behind because everybody else is going to be trying to understand the mechanics and master it from the beginning as well. So, um, the main thing in here, and this is in the way is you're going to have like tank class, a range warrior, kind of like a scout stealth skill kind of player, and then a healer. And that's almost in every role playing game you're going to play. That's why I say, go play some role playing games, get some practice with it. So the concept in here, I want you to understand is you're going to have these type of archetypes, of a tank, and I'll get to them in a second. So a tank, a range, you know, range player. Uh, so a tank slash melee, get up close, hit, range, hit you from a distance. Scout, move fast, but can have the ability to do massive damage in, in critical strikes. And then a healer, somebody who can heal your team, but also put a, like a debuff. Imagine like somebody who can, um, you know, um, <laughs> I'm going to use some different way, crazy analogies like poison the other team or put viruses all in their phones. You know, that kind of debuff to the other team to, to bring down, um, you know, talk bad about them online, get everybody laughing at them, bring down their morale. Um, those are the kind of things you want to look for. So you got your tank, your healer, your ranged and your skills and you're going to mid max. So these are the three things you got to think of. Mid-maxing, we'll talk about that in a second. And then team, plan, and execution. So playing this game, there's going to be points where you're going to probably have to either create one of all of these. Is my thought. I'm not sure if you better have a character that can blend traits, but you're going to probably have to create one of these. And then we'll talk about that in a second. So just say, you know, a baseline in your head. Think you got to create one of each of these characters. So you got to learn how to play as a tank, learn how to play as a ranged character, how to play as a stealth assassin, um, kind of a getting there a quick critical strike, a can dodge attacks and get out, and a character that can heal and also kind of damage the enemy. And that's been, and so you know that's kind of you know I guess like I already explained how those uh, kind of characters work. You know the tank is kind of a bit slow, cumbersome, but do a lot of damage when they get in close. Can take a lot of damage as well. That's kind of their trade-offs the range character can do damage not quite as much as the tank up close but they're further away and, and they can take less they can deal less damage and take less damage but it's harder to hit them so you either got to get close or have good range attack yourself <laughs> you know and a critical strike is they're usually not that tough 
but um, they're fast, so it's hard to hit them. And they have a high lot like luck or a high um, a risk of a critical uh, attack, which is meaning, you know, every player when it does an attack has a chance of a regular hit or a or a super powered hit. Like, oh wow, ooh, we got a good knockout hit. You know, that's always a chance in the roll. And so their characters have a higher chance of doing stuff like that. But they're also um, kind of good at moving around a map really fast as well. And remember, this will be a game that um, is going to be a combined high action combat. Sorry, fast action combat, the collectibilities, NFTs, and uh, history spanning adventure. So you'll be running around fighting enemies. And we'll talk about that teamwork um, as well. And then the healer, like I said, you know, you're going to make sure you can heal your teams really well and hurt enemies as much as possible. So mid maxing in these games, you know, means you know what your character is meant to do. So you as you progress through this game, a role playing game is you, this, this character is going to start at like a really low level and get more powerful as the game goes on. By defeating enemies, having gaining experience, going through adventures, gaining experience, and you'll see all this on the screen how much experience is gained and this and that, and they'll level up, and you have to decide, hey, you can add more skills. Do you want to go down the path of so for example, your quantum fixer, the character who is your healer, you can go down the path of being super good at healing people or really good at hurting the enemy. You know, you'll be good at healing people as well, but you'll be super good at hurting the enemy. You know, you'll probably have little minute decision trees like this to go back and forth with. Like your tank is, okay, you could be like a tank and take a lot of damage, but you're a little bit quicker. So that means you're a little bit weaker than other tanks, but you're a little bit quicker. You know, it'll be these little trade-offs as you go on that you have to think about. So you mid-max, meaning what will be the best kind of... So in your mind, you got to think, what, what kind of character do I want to think? When I used to play this game as a kid, like what kind of, imagine it like... You know, if you see these, like what kind of a superhero or a character from history that you imagine them being and, you know, what kind of skills do they need to, to, to play into that to that role you want to be? And sometimes some of these things are, that you're going to do and we don't know about this game yet, you're not going to get a chance to repeat the decision. So you got to live with your decision. So, you know, we'll talk more about that as we get closer of what would probably be good decisions along each of those kind of character lines uh, and teams. So that's the last and most important thing. Not it's important, super important. I was going to say, is it not, no, it's, it's probably the most important. Games like this requires a lot of cooperation, you know, so get prepared. You have to work well with others. It's not, a, it's not the worst thing. Um, it's a game we used to play called Destiny, where we used to do these things called raids, where six people would have to play together for like almost, you know, somewhere in between. Some raids could be close about, you know, 40 minutes to an hour. Some raids can go about five, six hours at times. 10, 12 hours if you, the first time. And a lot of complex things happen at once, especially later it got challenges and stuff. Don't ask. I mean, you can ask, but anyway. You learned in there. It was this one character. It's going to be my last bit, you know, breakout. Who, in that first game, he, his character, it was, the, it was the, the Titan. It was three classes of character. This class, you know, was the Titan. And it, I mean, one of its powers, it could make this big, giant bubble, an impenetrable bubble. So every other character could have, a, you know, had a gun that shoot bullets that could kill almost anything. You know, one character, if you if it dies, it can like a phoenix come back to life that your character, you can, you know, so you had like a free life. And it, no matter what was going on, that some special circumstances that dampen that, that power for everybody, the powers were dampen. But if your powers were active, if you die, you come back alive. It could throw fire and grenades, fire grenades. You, know, you come back alive on fire, throwing grenades at everybody. You know, other, one of the characters of the, the other Titan is that you would be able to just jump in the air and come down like a lightning bolt and kill everything around you. Um, but one of the powers of the Titan was to make this big bubble. And at first, everybody thought it was the stupidest thing in the world. Like, how is this going to be useful at all? 
it, you know, the bubble was impenetrable, but it was also impenetrable on both sides, to which what people found out a lot, which means if you shot inside the bubble, the bullets will start ricocheting and hitting people inside the bubble. So, you know, you can shoot out and enemy can shoot in. Now, no, no crazy story, but, but with a helmet, people come in and get blinds, long story. But anyway, that became the most important thing in the game. Later in the game, deep into what was the in game with the raids and the worst enemies shooting at you, having that impenetrable bubble was the most you 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 almost didn't go into the game without having a bubble titan, without having two bubble titans. You know what I'm saying? So you're gonna make one of each character. You're gonna learn how to play them because you never know what's gonna be an important win and what you're gonna need. And people are gonna be like, "Hey, I'm looking for this." You be like, "I can do that." Remember, this is about making money. And if you here listening this long, I love you. You love you. God loves us, and that's all that matter. My my bag. I didn't. I wouldn't. I didn't try to dip out what I was doing. What I said I was gonna do, which is give my plan. <laughs> I feel like I was talking too much. So, okay. This is the plan. Once I understand the tokenomics in terms of how much I'm earning with my space in the game, how much the tokens are going for, how much I'm earning, how much it requires to buy timekeepers, keep the, my, my hourglass filled up at the pace that I'm able to play the game at or sell hourglass, that that makes sense. How much I'm able to uh, need to forge or repair NFTs, whatever it may be, whatever that case may be. Everything extra, I'm turning into cash to get out what I put in. Once I have that, then I'll see if there's anything I need to do in terms of buying more space or buying NFTs. But, I, you know, I have no clue until that time will come and I'll keep you updated. Um, my time horizon for this in terms of you know, putting in my profits and maximizing and, you know, getting a sense of how well the company is doing is about two to three years. Um, but uh, hopefully after the end of this first year, just because they just, you know, right now there's nothing I have in my hands that I can work with myself. Um, so the, but, you know, hopefully that, you know, after this first year, year and a half, everything goes super smooth and it's blowing up and doing well, you know, that can easily start to expand out. So we'll see. Um, excited, of course. So I could keep you with that. That's my thoughts. Sorry about the uh, the fake out a little bit at the end there.